I said, this place is a bit remote, but the facilities in Science City are first class. We know how you feel about T.M. Trask. Many people, as you do, think men like Trask, rich as creases, are power mad. But when you meet him, I'm sure you'll change your mind. You know, he's followed your career. He admires your work. That's why he sent me east to talk to you. I won't try to influence you. You'll see it all for yourself. But I'm sure you'll agree it's the best offer of your life. Welcome to Science City. Doctor, I hear you detest me. Hmm? Dislike me? Or shall we say, uh, you suspect me? How about that? Dr. McCarter Purvis. Honor student, Olympic athlete, All-American in. Certified by the National Medical Board, diplomate in surgery. At your age, why is it that a young man as bright as you can't possibly accept the idea that a man like me could be a decent human being? Why must everybody label me as fascist, racist, madman with a king complex? Hmm? So you're saying there's no truth to the rumors? None. They pin the label on me, man of mystery, T.M. the man. Ridiculous. Nothing I've ever done had to be kept secret. I didn't steal anything I own. I built it. Sit down, relax. I started out as a common hand in the oil field with nothing but the sure knowledge that I could have anything in this world if I wanted it enough. I was just a kid when I gambled every dollar I had to bid on a fleet of rusty tankers and got them for a song, turned right around and Trade half of them off for the money to, uh, to recondition the rest. And I came out of it. I came out of it a kid with a fleet of tankers. Getting of trask lines. With oil, I did the same thing. There's no secret about it either. Just that there's been no secret about trask electronics. Trask Construction and a hundred other companies. Now, where's the man of mystery? Where's the justification for the names and the slanders and the libels? And I thought you of all people would understand me. Why? Because we're like 
We're both rebels, unorthodox. That's why I'm interested in you, Purvis. When I want something new and daring and worthwhile accomplished, I pick a rebel every time. Well, what is it you want accomplished? I want Science City to become the world's greatest medical research center. And I am willing to give brilliant young men freedom, equipment, and everything they need. Take your overfield. What eventually uh, kills the heart transplant patient? Rejection. Well, if we could find the perfect tissue match between donor and recipient, there never need be any rejection. Well, that's only possible in the case of identical twins. Now, what if we could draw on a vast reservoir of donors? Not only of all tissue types, but blood types. Then would you just say that a perfect match uh, was not possible? Yes. You see, it's only a matter of money and time, determination, searching and assembly. And I can offer you that. Dr. Bingham. Dr. Purvis. Dr. Purvis. How do you do, Doctor? Dr. Bingham's in charge of all our blood research. She came to us after a brilliant career in England. Are we heart surgeons at the mercy of our hematologists? Should I take a sample of the doctor's blood now? Yes, yes. Dr. Purvis has opted for joining us. Excuse me. He's in the lab now. Is that all you're going to take? Yes. You'll need all your strength for later when you have to fill out all the Trask forms. You don't like them very much, do you? I'm sorry. I didn't really mean to give that impression. Hmm. Purvis seems quite taken with Dr. Bingham. That could be a problem when the time comes. However, first things first. We must apologize for all the paperwork. I've never seen so many complex forms. Just a legality, Purvis. Standard anatomical gifts law. As administrator, I have everyone sign it here. Authorizes the use of any part of our body for transplant. In the event of our death, of course. It saves a valuable time in tracking down and getting permission from next of kin. If we doctors don't set an example, who will? You're right, sir. Would you witness, McBride? Doctor, this man you wanted as your assistant in surgery? Bryant. Carl Bryant. Mm -hmm. See that Dr. Purvis gets every member he wishes for his staff? Of course. Just give us the background on Bryant, and I'll set the wheels in motion. Oh, fine. Well, currently. Excellent. Dr. Purvis will be my most important acquisition. You're not used to this kind of country, are you, Doctor? You know a lot about me, don't you? I do. Blood type B, negative on uh, hepatitis, malaria, typhus, leukemia, and venereal disease. <laughs> well, that's the nicest thing any pretty girl ever said to me. We know all about you. Then why don't you call me Mac? We've been waiting for you, because TM's been waiting for you. You're the one last bright young mind he was after. I am glad you're here. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. So now, we're not going to attempt any complicated surgery. Certainly no transplants. Not till we get to work together as a team and have many dry runs. For example, I've got to know exactly to the split second how long it will take this team to move a heart donor from the helioport to the table. How long for excision? And delivery of that heart to this theater so that I can implant it. 
I've got to know exactly how long it's going to take to tissue type the milk. I was hoping that uh, Brian would be here by now. Brian? Yes. I'm sorry. Didn't you know? I did the routine tests on him and I sent it along with his file. The word came back just yesterday. He was rejected. But he's he's a top cardiac surgeon. Better talk to McBride. Well, McBride is the man who says no for TM. Well, then I'll talk to TM. No. This weekend, I'd like to see those mountains. They look fabulous. Oh, yes. Well, uh, you can drive to the logic. I don't mean me. I mean us. Well, we'll see. Well, don't you ever get the feeling that you'd like to get away from this place and find some privacy? Old time. Well, then. We'll see. Bryant. Bryant. He's a cardiac surgeon. I chose him for my own personal assistant. Oh, of course. Bryant. Good man. He's the best. Good enough so you would trust him with your own life? Well, yes, I would. Well, with an endorsement like that, we must have him. Thank you, Tia. Any other complaints? No, no. Everything's going along just fine. Good. Good. That's fine, thank you. McBride? Yes, sir. Dr. Purvis was just in, and he's convinced me that we should waive our rules to bring Dr. Bryant here. So in this one case, because Purvis is so strong for him, it worked. Purvis came in on his own. He wants Bryant, said he'd trust him with his own life. I had to hear that from him myself to be absolutely sure. Bryant is the last man I need. Now get him. What's the matter? He seems so uptight. Is it me? Of course not. Are you afraid of something? Not you. Everybody in this place, sometimes even those mountains. When I first came here, I welcomed it because it was so isolated. It was a place to work, to escape the constant tension I had been under. You see, I had had a breakdown, a nervous breakdown, so I came here, was glad to come here, until I began to feel something strange. To suspect everyone and everything. <laughs> Even now. I don't know if I should trust you. Or myself for that matter. You see. I wonder is something happening to me again. Or is it what I found. That's what I want to know. What is it you found? If I show you something. Will you promise to tell me honestly what you think? Whether it's important? Or if you think I'm crazy? Okay? Okay. You'll be honest with me one way or the other. Yes. All right, then. Here's a file of all blood studies compiled in my laboratory. percent of type B blood. In all my experience, I have never seen such a study before. And tell me, do you have a detailed blood study of everyone here at Science City? Only the men. Now read this. Remarkable. 
number of tissue types. Close to your hypothetical specimen. It's not my hypothetical specimen. It was given to me by Dr. Emmett. Oh, how I wish I hadn't told you. You think it's me, don't you? You think there's something wrong with me? I'm so afraid to go through that all over again. No, oh, Edith, it's not you. It is strange. You have every right to be suspicious. what happened to me. I have never spoken about it to anyone before. But I would like you to know. Do you mind? I would like to know. Yes, he is. I'll call him. Just a minute. Provis here. Dr. Provis, there's a call here for you from Eastern Hospital. Uh, Dr. Morton, will you take the call? Yes, I'd like to speak to him. Can you patch him into this line? Certainly, Doctor. Will you hold, please? It's Morton. He was my chief at the hospital. No one is calling. Dr. Provis, Dr. Morton's on the line. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Mac. Mac, it's good to hear your voice. I hope it's all going well. Fine, just fine. How about yourself, sir? They say... They say I have to have open-heart surgery. I've seen the x-rays. They're right. Well, if you'd like another opinion, I'd be glad to. I've had enough opinions, so... I need surgery. I want you to do it. I'll fly east first thing in the morning. Thanks, son. Thanks very much. Oh, we'd best start down. Rhodes are icy here after sunset. I promised him tomorrow afternoon. So, you really plan to go back east? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. The elderly gentleman, your debt of gratitude? There's much more than that. So? You'd leave here, go back east, and attempt difficult surgery with an unfamiliar team, perhaps even a hostile team. That must be an emotional decision, my boy. Okay, emotional. Mm -mm. Vanity. Perhaps revenge. Shall we say the need to show them because they embarrassed you? Now, uh, if you're really concerned about Morton's life, and I believe you are, operate here with your own team. Well, that's exactly what I'd like to be able to do. When I heard, I immediately sent number one back east to save every possible minute. Yes, uh, your patient will be here, I would say, in a little less than nine hours, doctor, copter flight and all. conversation up there, didn't they? And you were not allowed to leave here and go east? Yeah. Task Force One. Why would T M be so... so caught up with his own flying hospital? Seemed to me it meant something else to him. 
Just another example of Trask's need for the... Biggest, the best, and the most modern, I should think. Yeah, but what if it meant something much more to him than just that? What could be more important to Trask than his vanity, his need for power? Only one thing. Now, you've tested and blood typed everyone here. Seen everyone's medical history. Now, tell me about Trask's background. Medically, I don't know anything about it. You mean you've never seen it? No, I've never seen it, or I've never done a blood or tissue type on him, no. Well, now, that's strange, isn't it? He must be hiding it. And that only means that I've got to see it. How can we find it? Well, if it's here, we'll find it. here, Brian, is first rate. You made the trip perfectly all right. I brought along the x-rays, Mac. I've seen them. And? He moves rather strangely. First reading. Fair enough. He's a very sick man. See Not more than purpose. Seems the same to me. So when he first came here, he had all the smooth, easy, cat-like freedom of the Olympic athlete. But now... Report any suspicious moves by Dr. Purvis. Report them to me immediately. I've searched every record and file I could get my hands on. There's absolutely no medical record of Trask. There's got to be. Where? Trask's office, McBride's. How about Emmett? Mm-mm. Emmett wouldn't have patients' files. He's an administrator. There's got to be. That's the only place left. I've got to get in there and see those files. Look. Tomorrow night, Morton's operation. I'll be able to move in and out of his room all night long without drawing any suspicion. But first, I've got to set Emmett up. That's what I... Do it? Yeah. Come on, let's go. Because of the importance of this case, and because of TM's interest in the outcome, I want you to examine Morton's file. A successful operation tomorrow could mean our acceptance into the highest medical circles in the world. That's why I brought it. So that you can check on my diagnosis and my procedure before any surgery. There's really no need. I'd feel better about it. Let me leave it with you. All right. Good luck tomorrow, Purvis. I don't need it. James? Are you ready? Readings ready? I don't like the risk. 
But it's his only chance. Prime the pump. I want constant readings on all vital signs. Put him on complete pulmonary bypass. Pressure, 70 over 40. Pulse, 52. Are we on full flow? Yes, sir. Fibrillation. Let's shock. Charge. It's come off the pulmonary bypass. Off pump. Pulse 64, weak but regular. Pressure 90 over 60. Congratulations, Doctor. TM. I witnessed the entire procedure. It's the best I've ever seen. You know, it's my ambition for Morton to recover so completely that he write this up for the surgical journals himself. With the entire world to choose from, he chose us. And it worked. Oh, we'll know more about that in 48 hours. I keep telling you, you and I are alike. Anything you put your hand to works. Winning is a way of life with you. That's why I admire you so much, my boy. Oh, Purvis. About your plans for tonight. I've flown in Reisenstein to give a piano recital at my place. If you can steal a little time away from Morton, why drop in, hmm? Of course I will try. And bring Dr. Bingham. these most delicious thoughts of where we are and what we're doing. It's a perfect cover. I'll never suspect when Emmett's off us. Okay. Okay. Let pass. 
glasses. Okay. be here somewhere. that might work. Easy now. Dr. 
Mr. Bingham. Uh, Dr. Morton is filed. I left it here the day I had a consultation with Dr. Emmett. You know how it is. People are always making jokes about absent-minded professors. But I don't think they're too amused with absent-minded doctors. So you could do me a great favor if you wouldn't mention it to anyone. Morton's file, all right. Well, don't worry, Doc. I won't tell anybody. We all make mistakes. Good night. Code number. 201320. That's the code number that Emmett put on our hypothetical tissue specimen, 320. 201320. The 20th letter in the alphabet is T. The 13th letter, M. 20 again, that's T. TMT. Thomas Maynard Trask. So all the blood B types are not a statistical accident. No. His electrocardiogram was normal four years ago, and three years ago, and two years ago. A heart attack. A severe heart attack, two years ago. Science City began two years ago. Building, construction, Hiring. It all began after his severe heart attack. The healing and scarring, far from satisfactory. In case of another severe heart attack, a heart transplant would be the only thing to keep him alive. Excellent tissue compatibility. And there are six. Six 75% matches in this group alone. With this vast scientific complex, with the best equipment, the finest staff, top flight surgical personnel. And what? And a wealth of possible donors to choose from. Six almost perfect tissue matches for Trask. And all available. Only needs the right kind of accident. And that wouldn't be difficult. Would a man go to all this trouble just to win a few more months of life? Well, with the rejection factors, Reduced to a minimum. He could live for three, four, five, or many years. Anytime he needed another heart, all he'd have to do is take one. Look at the bottom of this tissue type chart. Recognize that handwriting? It's Trusks. But compatibility is more than blood, more than tissue type. Consider the whole man. And when the time comes, do not call it vanity. Look at the compatibility factor alongside your name. Yes, I know. But more important than that, we have to expose this place. The only way we can do that is to get away. When? Not until Morton leaves. But until then, we can make plans. We're being watched continually. I know we are. We're not going to be able to get out by copter. So the only other way out would be over the mountains. We'll go on a skiing weekend. We'll make plans from there.
down through that valley over that glacier. But according to the map here, it drops right off. Oh, we can't make it. Now what are we gonna do? Well, let's try up there. Maybe we can find a way down the other side. That yeah, looks possible. We're in this trance. Ready. Line down there. Let's take a look. Yeah. We cut down that ridge, cross those flats, onto that glacier. We'd be home free. I wish we could do this at night. It was too dangerous. We'd never make it. So that means we've got to be here early in the morning so we can cross it in daylight. Huh? Okay? Set? Let's go back and hide our gear. Consider the whole man. Trask admires you. Your independence, your spirit, and even your heart. A strong, athletic heart. It could serve him for years. From every aspect. Blood type, tissue type, psychiatric type. It's your heart he needs to give him a new life. All right. If he hasn't picked you as his donor, then answer me one question. Just one question. Why? Why did he accept Brian, who is not his same blood type at all? Because I insisted. I went to Trask to fight for Brian. Wait a second. Come to think of it, that was the only way I did convince him, was to tell him that I would trust my life with Brian. Yes, and once he had his donor, all he needed was the guarantee of a skilled surgeon to perform the transplant. seem to be out of order up here. I know. We've had some difficulty with it. What's up? It's an emergency. Mr. McBride sent us. A patient might need open-heart surgery. Well, can't Dr. Bryan do it? Mr. McBride said Dr. Bryan would rather have you do it. It's urgent, Doctor. All right, if you just give me a second or two. I'll step inside if it's all right with you. Go with him. Let's try and get out of here tonight now, somehow. I'm sure they suspect something. No, I don't think so. There's an emergency. Yeah. We'll go down. I'll do my surgery, and then we'll make a break for it as soon as we can. Okay? I'll go get your things. <laughs> Brian says we just grab it once. I forgot you're finally here. Where's Brian? Over there. Six hours ago, pain, chest congestion. 
damn it, stop play acting. The patient has had a severe heart attack. His heart action is quite erratic. Pulse is weak. Respiration is slow and irregular. I would say it's a massive attack. I should also say that we should consider his surgery, including the possibility of a transplant. Is it if a donor? A donor should become available. The first attack left its scar. And it appears the second is even worse. No doubt about that. Gentlemen, would you come right to the point, please? You know Mr. Trask. He insists on being informed on every surgical procedure right up to the last moment. I want a complete and frank view of the situation. There's only one word to use. Critical. Does he have a chance to survive? Miracles happen. Well, how would you assess his chances of a transplant were available? That's rather academic, I'd say, considering there aren't any donors available. And Dr. Emmett? It's the surgeon's decision. I would say, speaking theoretically, of course, that the patient's condition would allow for transplant surgery. Wouldn't you, doctor? Theoretically, yes. It's ironic, isn't it? The man has given so much to science should be bereft of hope at such a crucial moment. I suppose it was meant to be. Excuse me, gentlemen. Post heart transplantation, sir. It's so hopeless. They're not good risks. A man like Trask with his will to live. Might have been interesting to observe him after a transplant. How much time do you give him? Well, if a donor were available, I'd say it'd take about three or four days before he'd be up to that severe an operation. Three or four days, then the surgery. Right. How? Well, it's very difficult to control a highway accident, TM. I suggest for purpose a laboratory accident. No, do make sure I need that heart. Now I know it's mine. It's always been mine. Hello? Dr. Bingham here. Yes, he is. Just a moment. Purvis. Security. Yeah? Yes? I'll be right over. They say that an addict has invaded the center and they think he's in my lab. They want me to go right over. Sounds a little fishy, doesn't it? It's got to be a trick. Don't go. Well, if I don't, they'll know we're on to him. You pick up a car. Maybe behind the lab building. I'll make a break for it as soon as I can. attacking me. It could have been worse. You could have hit me. I reacted too quickly. A case of mistaken identity. I guess so. Now that I'm here, I better go look at my animals.
sorry about the mistake, Purvis. It's all right. I guess I was just lucky. Just in case an addict is at large. I want a 24-hour surveillance on Dr. Purvis. Don't let him out of your sight. You take that end. Okay. surveillance. Good. Is Purvis still in there? Yes. Anything suspicious? No. Just listen to that racket he's making. Attention all guards, full alert. Dr. Purvis is missing. Secure all exits and fall emergency search units. Her car is easy to track. We'll have them both back by the morning. Same way you never let him out of your sight? I'll manage this myself. TM, you're a sick man. If I left it up to you, it'd be a dead one. Patch me in on all command points. TM Trask speaking. Dr. Purvis and Dr. Bingham are needed back here for emergency surgery. You will close off all exit points from Trask Farm at once. At dawn, all copters will search all roads to locate a red sports car. On sighting that car, contact me at once. First man to report with their whereabouts will receive a promotion and a bonus. I am waiting. have seen something. Over. Chapter one, the trash. We're picking up something now. Move an object. Fire up round two seven. Head towards the glacier lodge. Yeah, that's it. The red car. I'm patching you in. I see it. Track them. All copters, Purvis heading up Route 27. Report your positions relative to Route 27. All ground security forces in Route 27 area converge on Glacier Ski Lodge. We're not going to be able to make it to the lodge. We'll have to use some deception. How? Once that helicopter closes in on us, we don't have a chance. Here it comes now. 
before we're moving. Jump clear when I tell you. Check it at once. I want to know if Purvis is alive. I can see the car in the river. So, it must have been a deliberate wreck. Get up to the lodge. No, no, wait. They'll guess we covered the lodge. They must be heading up to the ski line. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'd do. That's what Purvis would do. Copter one, head up to the ski line and find them. Watch. Prepare to advance to ski line. Trask to copter one. Trask to copter one. Have you picked up any trace? Oh, no, there's no sign of them yet. Well, keep searching. They must be there. Yes, sir. Over and up. Copter two and copter six report in. Copter 6 reporting. No sign of Route 27 Lodge. Get the ski left. When we get to our gear, we'll be okay. Come on. Copter 1 checking Area 3. Copter 2 reporting. No sign in Lodge area. Security forces ready for airlift for ski patrol. Stand by and wait my orders. Pad. Recall supply detail. Urgent. The Glacier area. It'll be one hour at least. I repeat, urgent. Pilots report to Mr. Trask immediately on arrival. Up that way.
That's the ridge up there. Come on. Assist you now. Close in and don't lose him. And don't let him make it to the glacier. He must be brought back alive. Roger. All right, we'll try and head him off, but don't fire unless we have to. Down there. It's the wrong way. I know it is, but we've got to lose him. Come on. the glacier line. We've kept them on Kras territory. We'll close in. Kras to Copter 6. Report in. Copter 6 reporting. Copter 1 has located Purvis and the woman on Powell Flats. Close in to assist. Roger. Some warning shots, and if that doesn't stop them, shoot the woman. Roger. Next time around. Now. I said, get right down on the snow if you have to. Well, I'll wait up. I said, find them. Find them! Lost that one. Come on, let's go before they send another. Copter one, report in. Crash calling, acknowledge. Copter one, report in. Crash calling, acknowledge. Copter 6 reporting. Copter 1 has crashed. Flames on lower flats, no radio contact. We're heading to check for survivors. Forget survivors, get after Purvis. But the... Get after Purvis! He'll be heading up for the glacier. 
Roger. We must stop him before they get across the property line. He'll never make it, TM. He's got to cross the glacier. You forget, McBride. The man has spirit and heart. Why, it shows him. Copter 6 reporting. Spotted them heading on the glacier. But how could they? Pursue and shoot to kill. They went over the glacier. I think we got them. Shall we search? Are they on my property? Negative. They went over the line. I see no movement. Copter 6 to Trask. Are you reading me? Are you reading me? Discontinue pursuit outside my property. Even if they're alive, they may never be found. Roger. Can we check Copter 1 now? Yes. Yes, go back now. Well, we did everything we could, Tim. A man never says he did everything he could, unless he failed. Oh. Copter One, who was in it? Pilot Clinton and... Co-pilot Corey. Clinton. McBride? Yes, sir. Get on the radio. Never mind, I'll do it myself. <sighs> TM Trask calling. Copter 6 come in. Have you located Copter 1? Located and circling. Any survivors? Pilot Clinton, okay. Co-pilot Corey injured. Pick them up, bring them back swiftly as possible. McBride? Yes, sir. Find out the extent of the pilot's injuries. But TM, the pilot isn't injured. Find out the extent of the pilot's injury. Notify Bryant that Purvis has disappeared. And he's now responsible for my life. Ed McBride. Too bad about Purvis. Brilliant young man. Overwork obviously took its toll. Report him missing at first. If he shows up anywhere and talks. Be very solicitous. Don't dispute what he may say about us. Just keep smiling behind me, talking about overwork and about a breakdown. And occasionally I refer to the girl and her mental history. Now, don't you worry, TM. 
when I get through with them. Don't believe a word they say. Let me know them the moment Clinton is brought back. Excellent type for now. 75% match. 